This is Mina from Insider Monkey. In this video, I am going to share healthcare hedge fund manager Michael Castor's answers to the following five questions about the coronavirus pandemic. Will coronavirus go away in the summer? Do hydroxychloroquine and remdesivir work? When will the COVID-19 vaccine be ready? And what to expect from corporate earnings? Michael Castor shared a coronavirus update in Sayo Capital's March 2020 investor letter. Why should we even listen to Dr. Castor, who is a hedge fund manager? Let me first tell you what a hedge fund is. In the 90s and early 2000s, hedge fund managers were among the smartest investors on the planet. There were only a dozen or so hedge funds in the beginning, and they used to return 25 to 30% a year and beat index funds by double digits in up and down markets. Investors noticed and flocked into hedge funds. A huge influx of capital brought an end to high hedge fund returns. Today, there are more than 1,000 equity hedge funds. More than 80% of these managers aren't talented and can't generate alpha, i.e. excess return on an investment relative to the return on a benchmark index. They are partially hedged closet index funds. For example, if the market returns 30%, these hedge funds usually return around 10 to 12%. And when the market loses 30%, these hedge funds lose 10 to 12%. There are a few exceptional hedge fund managers, and Michael Castor is one of them. Check out how his fund performed whenever the S&P 500 index lost more than 5% in the past. For example, during the 2008 financial crisis, the S&P 500 index lost around 40%, whereas Michael Castor's hedge fund returned more than 12%. This year, at one point, the S&P 500 index lost more than 30% from peak to trough. Michael Castor's hedge fund returned more than 5% in the current market carnage. You can identify good hedge fund managers by looking at their performance in bear markets. And Michael Castor is a good hedge fund manager. In early February of this year, he was telling his investors that COVID-19 will spread throughout the world. Now let's take a look at this video from just two months later in early April. Uh, yeah, I'd be remiss if I didn't first mention coronavirus and, and some quick thoughts there. Those thoughts are really that the dynamics going on, the social isolation protocols are no longer intended to eliminate coronavirus completely, much as we did other coronaviruses in the past, SARS and MERS, and as we did with Ebola outbreaks. The coronavirus at this point, it's here to stay. There are too many carriers. There's too long a period of incubation when people are asymptomatic. asymptomatic. The, the social isolation protocols that are being put in place now are being done with the hope that to the extent there is widespread infection, because this is a virus that we humans have not seen before, so there's really no immunity across the planet at all. These protocols are being play, put in place to prevent a massive amount of infection occurring concomitantly across the entire population such that there's no ability of healthcare systems to, uh, to, to tend to a huge bolus of people who could get sick all at once. You heard what Dr. Michael Castor said a few weeks ago. Yesterday, we saw a copy of Sayo Capital's latest investor letter, and he shared his views on the coronavirus pandemic. Here's what he said. Coronavirus is here to stay. There are questions as to whether the coronavirus will be seasonal with a drop in infections in the summer. Only time will tell. If it does turn out to be seasonal, it's not warm weather that is the determinant, given that there are outbreaks in California, Florida, Mexico, Brazil, and across the world, regardless of climate. With high transmissibility and essentially no natural immunity in the population, it's likely that there will be significant infectivity in summer, regardless of seasonality. Further, infection rates could spike when winter returns. Outside of seasonality, there are three factors that can mitigate disease, therapies, vaccines, and natural immunity. In terms of therapies, we humans have therapies against a great many viruses, such as HIV, influenza, hepatitis C, and herpes. Some viral therapies are more effective than others. Some viruses prove elusive to drug therapy. At present, coronavirus falls into this latter camp. There have been discussions about the promise of hydroxychloroquine. Our read on the evidence leaves us thinking that this drug is either weak 
or not effective at all. Another drug in development that has gotten attention is Gilead's remdesivir. Data are limited, but the absence of enthusiasm from randomized trials leaves us cautious. Hopefully we are wrong. There is ample funding, abundant research, and a high level of determination. We have yet to see scientific data that looks promising. So Michael Castor doesn't see any signs that indicate that hydroxychloroquine nor remdesivir are effective treatments. Here is what Dr. Castor wrote about potential vaccine. The prospects of successfully developing vaccine appear more promising. It is unclear how long immunity from a vaccine would remain in force, but even short duration immunity would be fine given the potential to administer annual booster shots as is done with flu vaccines. A challenge is that vaccines take time to develop. Unlike the paradigm that drugs are given to individuals with ailments, vaccines are given broadly to healthy people with a goal of preventing disease. Safety is paramount. It is not a foregone conclusion that an experimental vaccine will be safe. Some vaccines have been halted in development for toxicity. Further, vaccines must stimulate the immune system in the right way, namely to mount a response that neutralizes the vi vaccine. Determining this requires clinical testing. Vaccine development normally takes six to 10 years. Current discussions anticipate the possibility of having a vaccine around the end of 2021. This would be unparalleled speed in the history of vaccine development. Corners would necessarily need to be cut. Safety would need to be monitored over time outside of clinical trials. There are multiple promising candidates. There is a political will to accelerate timelines. Even so, the earliest a vaccine could arrive would be approximately 18 months from now. Let's take a look at Michael Castor's views on the US economy. All this points to a challenged period in the months to come. Social distancing protocols have been effective at curtailing outbreaks. Infection rates should begin to decline. However, with a long incubation period and many people who are always asymptomatic, it is not reasonable to think coronavirus can be eliminated. If social distancing protocols are lifted, it is likely this virus will spread again. Perhaps with easier access to testing and better preparedness, society will accept this. Alternately, societies could collectively decide to make social distancing the normal way of life until a vaccine is developed. Regardless of the exact path forward, the next 18 months or longer are likely to see disruption of economic output, probably with persistent low demand for travel and leisure services, but also with lower capital spending as companies take a measured approach while determining how their business is impacted. There you have it. Castor says, don't expect things to get back to normal in three months. It is a long road ahead. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Insider Monkey levels a playing field for the little guys and brings you the best hedge fund moves at a tiny fraction of what they charge.